anti-gay Hungarian politician caught fleeing a 25-man orgy. <laughs> um, this actually happened in Belgium. Um, so... So the uh, politician is Hungarian, but it happened in Belgium. Yes, because he's a representative to the EU. Um, so, um, Joseph Slager, a member of the European Parliament representing Hungary's ruling Fidesz party, has resigned from his position in Brussels after police caught him leaving what reports described as a 25-man orgy. <laughs> He admitted to breaching Belgium's lockdown rules to attend a sex party that included diplomats. The local newspaper quoted a police source as saying, <laughs> we interrupted a gangbang. Wait, did they, did they actually say that? Did they say we interrupt? No. The, the the news it's in quotes the newspaper quotes. quoted a police source so according to saying that the police officially said we interrupted the gangbang if if this is true it's legendary <laughs> wait let me finish okay it's no so good. come on it's so no good. this is too Yay good for the belgians <laughs> This is not real. This is too good. This is too it's good. Too, wait, let me finish. Let me. This politician, <laughs> Slager. Let me finish. Not if the police. <laughs> not, not if. Not if the Belgian police can do anything about it. Not when five zero rolls up. <laughs> so Slager, I know I'm saying that wrong. Helped rewrite Hungary's constitution to quote protect the institution of marriage as the union between a man and a woman. End quote. He was spotted climbing out of a first floor window and quote fleeing along the gutter. <laughs> End quote. Okay, <laughs> it's so good. Okay, but the beautiful part of it is that he, like, we can laugh, and sometimes we're like, oh, but he didn't deserve it. Like, it's like laugh, but oh, sorry for him, or well, but this guy deserved it. Like, this is okay. Tell us about why, who this guy is, and why this is beautiful. Okay, the story by itself is beautiful, but then when you learn about this guy and what he did, it becomes even more beautiful. Why? Yeah, so he was involved in rewriting the Hungarian constitution to explicitly. Yeah, like I said, protect the institution of marriage as the union between a man and a woman. So rewriting the um, constitution to uh, define marriage as impossible for it to be a same-sex relationship. Yeah. Uh, Bigots usually have pos more positive uh, phrases for their bigotry. Like, they're like, we hate the gays. I'm like, no, protect We're pro-family. We're pro family. We're pro institution sacred marriage. <laughs> like, no, just I. We hate gays. That's that's what you mean. That's what you mean. Uh, <laughs> oh, Rivka wants to say something. Rivka, yeah, Rivka. Rivka, go ahead. Apparently, Yosef also had narcotics in his backpack and no ID. But when they got mm -hmm. him back to where he was living, then he presented them with his diplomatic passport. So he was hanging out at the sex party, breaking the lockdown rules. He also had um, apparently bloody hands, which he may have. <laughs> oh, that's a pretty funny uh comment but um uh, it says i'm pretty effing gay but not 25 man orgy <laughs> gay which is pretty funny well i always say is say nothing says gay like virulent homophobia right like under the ground <clears throat> right? um so um he had uh he had bloody hands but they think maybe that happened when he was like you know fleeing literally Jumping out of a first story right. window, and craw crawling along the gutter, which is a amazing metaphor in and of, it, in guy, and of like, itself. Yeah, like fingers, like Spider Maning down the <laughs> building. And he said, um, "You know, I don't take drugs. You know, I'm not sure if he's like, oh, I was just holding those narcotics for a friend or whatever, <laughs> you yeah. know, right?" 
But he had narcotics in his bag, and he said he was at a private party, and he apologized. But oh. And he also said that he deeply regrets breaking the COVID restrictions, and it was irresponsible, and he's ready to pay the fine. Okay, well, that's all very nice. No, the the police said that, like, this 20 month, it wasn't just, like, a regular, like, 20 minute five-man orgy like they showed up and everyone was naked like everyone was busted. and probably and probably on drugs yeah okay this would be legendary if it wasn't during COVID times and if this guy wasn't like such a hypocrite you know what i mean like it if you're having an orgy and there's 25 other people 24 other people i mean like this is like wow this is like they, you should be proud like look at our politicians having fun right like our, there were other diplomats there too <laughs> <laughs> like who said politicians are boring like amazing like yeah go you do you i may like this is something to brag about but again there's two things that makes this like no screw you guys first of all 25 people getting this close during COVID time. <laughs> like, <laughs> like this close on about, multiple levels. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, to, talk about spreading <laughs> germs, right? But another, yeah, but also the and fact drop that this guy, and droplets. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Oh, but God. but again, also about the the fact that this guy was anti-gay. Like, god damn the level of hypocrisy like this guy is now famous worldwide everybody is talking about him now right yeah. oh but let's take let's look at some comments but yeah, i actually uh, i disagree what? with rivka wait no bring us back to the three that's okay. just a joke that's i don't yeah. necessarily no 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 okay it, no i I, know. I don't even know what you because what, what it you happens disagree? all the time in the united states that, like, can i actually a, hear what what the disagreement is first so i the made disagreement... a joke about nothing says well, gay like I... rampant homophobia and it's just okay, a joke okay. about how many politicians particularly like we've seen it quite a bit in the united states with a lot of these anti-gay or anti yeah, Ted Haggard ro Republicans. Tend but can to we be, hear the opposition? Yeah, I just was repeating the joke. Okay. I thought you couldn't okay. hear the joke. I'm sorry. No, no. Okay, okay. <laughs> um, so, okay. yes, no, Rivka, I totally understand that you're joking. But, like, a lot of people legitimately think that. And just to put on my critical gender studies hat for a second, we talked about this when I was doing my minor in that field. And um, th that's, uh, it's, you know, quote unquote problematic because that's actually putting the onus of homophobia back onto gay people. You know, by like saying like, oh, well, homo like if you're like the most homophobic people are actually gay, then in that way you're actually making gay people responsible you're like blaming them for it basically when that's not uh, i kind true. of see what you're saying but i disagree what i'm saying by making that joke is is this person can't be true to himself so he has what we were just discussing earlier i was like you know preference falsification right yeah. because he knows that it's socially unacceptable and whatever realm this person may be in so he's going to say that but that isn't what he, he how he truly feels so in the privacy behind the closed door of the orgy he's able to be who he really wants to be but in order to either you know be a part of a political party or not be killed or you know whatever it is he's going to go along to get along type of thing oh totally. i see what you're saying and how it puts the onus back on them but i think the joke itself stands because so many of these guys have come out in the sense of finding out that we found guy after guy after guy, you oh, know, yeah. in a bathroom propositioning right. somebody, you know, a 25 man orgy, a hotel. <laughs> so in and of itself, the joke is, it right, still stands. The, yeah, no, the, yeah, joke, the joke is joke fine. Stands. I was actually talking yeah. about like people who genuinely. Right, I need to, that. I need to highlight the comments yeah. now. Yes. Yeah, okay? So, um, Susanna, do you want to read the first one? 
Okay. Um, Fidesz, his political party became deeply religious on the surface during the last decade. They formed an alliance with every notable church in Hungary. Every allied church received enormous amounts of money for their dirty support towards the government. Priests directly and verbally suggest the accepted and awaited voting preferences for the believers. Of course, the political candidates of Fidesz, Fidesz oh, this is the party. Um, this party distorted the expectations of the fanatic and zealous believers towards every other people. The atheists, liberals, LGBTQ people um, became the enemy of the churches, the party, and the Hungarian nation, according to their beliefs. They even created this these quote-unquote morals. Mr. Uh, Slodger's quote-unquote little affair exploded into this atmosphere. You can imagine the consequences. Mm, interesting. And I, again, I'm going to make an exploded joke. No, um, so, <laughs> uh, no, but I was just thinking about like, like it's no surprise. It that did you, not explode thanks to the police. I know. I mean, right. ACAB guys. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> this is what finally turned me anti police um no i mean it's no surprise that he would be in the closet like we've talked a lot on this show about how deeply homophobic the ruling party of hungary is and mm. how much they've influenced the culture i'm not going to say all hungarians or all of hungary is deeply homophobic homophobic but it's has a lot of mainstream support right now or at least that's what it seems to me as a foreigner i'm glad Rivka is just talking while muted. You have to read Ida Dietrich Knightley's joke where it says, it, oh, is, he he Mennonite? <laughs> is he Mennonite? Is he Mennonite? I've seen them do at least 10 Mennonites. <laughs> <laughs> I right. know Deborah must be loving that one because she was actually raised as a Mennonite. Well, oh, you this know is a good come. Okay, go ahead. Um, Lydia is saying he's sorry for breaking the COVID restrictions, but not for writing discriminatory BS in the Constitution and generally anti-LGBTQ+, anti which will hurt his fellows in that community there. You, sir, are a disgrace. Yes. <laughs> Wait, and then this person is commenting on how he was scaling the window and he said he just couldn't resist that shot. <laughs> That shaft. <laughs> it's just too good. too good. This is yeah. such a good news. Yeah, we needed this <laughs> after all the bad news that we cover here. Oh, look at Deborah did like that joke. <laughs> <laughs> That's so hard too. Uh, um, all right. Wait, you know what's really it? interesting, though? It's not quite similar, but there was... um. And it doesn't have to do so much with this, but there was a Hungarian politician who was virulently anti-Semitic. And then they found out that he was, he actually had Jewish roots and he got kicked out of the party. Oh my God. He, yeah. So it's like, what's going on with Hungary? And they're like, you know, I just anyways, there's a whole film about him and what happens oh, wow. to him. I'll have to find the film Wait, and put it up. There's so many good comments. Trump trolls is saying, quote, it's just too good. That's what he said to Susanna. And then there's this comment by Toby. It's just Brussels police release first images of the scene, and it's a bunch of eggplants surrounding the Hungarian flag. <laughs> Uh, wait, Arun, unmute yourself. <laughs> That's a whole lot of goulash. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't know if I'm. I don't know if I'm enjoying the story more or Susanna's reaction, but it's both cool. Um, oh yeah, this one. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't be surprised if in five years this article is about Pence. Oh yeah, uh, it's actually... Mike Pence. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> Uh, oh, look at, oh, let's actually have some good Hungarian represent uh, people. Okay, Claudia is saying, I enjoy being a Hungarian, amazing country, amazing politicians. We are not all 
miserable here. No, Proud we are not nation. at all miserable here. It's sarcastic. We're not at all miserable here. Oh, this is sarcastic. <sighs> and then the and person then they, above they, is saying, again, snagged. the person above is also being sarcastic. I love being Hungarian. It's so much fun. Wait, it's not. <laughs> Aww. Yeah, by the way, uh, Hungary and Poland is like e ethno nationalists. Hungary, Poland, and Japan are ethno nationalist go to countries as how you do politics right. Okay? Yeah, for a homogenous uh, society. And Japan is Japan because it's like mostly like homogenous, as in like we like anti immigrant, which is very interesting because Japan itself is realizing that they need to open their borders to more immigrants for the sake of their economy recently. So for that are with their aging population, their declining birth rate, they're screwed. They're like, yeah, we need to like, eeh, we need to loosen up our immigration policy. So that because argument they can't is get their own people to have sex. And, yeah, and they, they don't <laughs> have, they have a lot more men than they have women too mm -hmm. and right. they're is just that a, thinking, a problem in japan i thought that was i thought that was china. china it's more yeah. china but a lot of places in asia because if you notice like most of the babies that like korea japan some in japan but also there a lot of the women now just they're working they don't want to be married and then also the way the corporate or in the culture is in japan it's not a lot of time you know, because mm -hmm. of how late it works. But, but, this but my joke, point, go ahead. The point I was trying to get to is that Poland and Hungary, this is the country that these people like, like the, the homophobic, racist, anti Semitic politicians that they have in Hungary and Poland. This is what a lot of these ethno nationalists look up to as examples of how, how the rest of Europe should be. I'm hearing a bit echo, but I think, uh, Susie, can you reduce my audio? I uh, can't. I'm on 1% and only listening to you in one ear. Look at Nelson's comment. Nelson says, I'm sure he was just doing research for a book. <laughs> That's a Pete Townsend reference, isn't it? I think it is. Yeah. I like That's this one. Cool. So deep in the closet, he was in Bloody Narnia. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know that. Uh, Murtad is saying hentai is the number one effective birth control. <laughs> Why were the police fleeing, uh, fleeing an orgy? Sarcasm. Maybe he was studying the ethics of homosexuality. <laughs> Oh my, oh my god there's so many more here we got it's like like we, no we got this so many reactions i think over nine thousand. it was four thousand last time I we tried. got nine like we posted this on atheist republic facebook page it got nine thousand reactions and 800 comments yeah link to by the way link to our facebook post when every time we we cover uh, news link to the facebook post is in the description if you guys want to go have fun with the comments there anyway this story oh. just blew up <laughs> no. Okay, okay, okay. Oh, um, why can't fun. all the stories be this good? Why guy? can <laughs> all the stories lighthearted be like... and enjoyable? Uh, yeah, okay, that that was... we're talking about religion. I'm sure <laughs> he's not thinks it's not that enjoyable <laughs> <laughs> anymore. I... It was enjoyable until the cop showed up. Yeah. So, guys, actually, damn pigs. This is it. <laughs> So right now, because religion has so much influence in our lives, like when we cover the news and religion, I think like a lot of them is going to be like negative, sad news, right? But if we start winning, I think we're going to have more stories like this, right? So for the for the people who are saying that we need we shouldn't get political at all, like this is why we need to get political, okay? We need to get we need more good stories. Okay? And subscribe, everyone. Every single one of you is watching, subscribe, do it now, do it, do it now!